everybody, we are here today to film a video about a review, and we are reading... Greetings. We're Hi. We are reviewing the book. We're um, going to do a book review today. A comic book review. A comic book. Will you stop rocking me? Uh, Jim Ballant, I'm guessing. Tiro, Witch of the Black Rose 101. So here's what the book looks like. Um, this is. This is. I think there's two covers to this. I don't know which one we got. We just ordered it cover. from um, Midtown from Comics. Midtown Comics, and this is the one we got. There's a mature reader's, reader's sticker on sticker it. on there. Well, it's not a sticker; it's printed. Well, printed, yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely, you deserve a mature logo. I mean, a mature. What are you talking? About? So I was trying to read and think so at the same this time. Is this really definitely a video should for, have a mature yeah. tag on This it. is a video more for people who are like 18 and older that are able to purchase um, mature Well, if you can books. talk your mom. Like, when I was a kid, what I would do is my grandparents didn't know anything. So, like, I would get them to get stuff for me that I probably shouldn't have. Like, I remember one time there was this Spice Girls video at the um, local video store and it showed Ginger Spice which was my favorite Spice Girl in the buff and like it was videos from a photo shoot and all these pictures and stuff and I wanted it really bad but I know my mom wouldn't rent it for me and one of my grandparents was like he was up on things so he would have caught me on it and he would have been like no I'm not renting that for you <laughs> but my other grandpa really just didn't like I don't want to say he didn't give a shit but I don't guess he like he didn't get sexual stuff maybe? well no he did I, I just think that okay so the way it is was you would take the movie out from behind a box so it was just a movie and I think his thought was oh he's just renting an R-rated movie because I liked a lot of action movies and stuff and they didn't care about that and he didn't pay attention to what movies are coming out or like he only watched Dukes of Hazard in the news, really. So, um, so he, he didn't know what Yeah, he wasn't up on it. And he probably just looked at it and was like, Spice Girls Exposed, what is this kid reading? Or wanting to, what is this kid watching? And I, I went and I got him and he checked it out for me. So I got to watch they it. The people at the video store must have thought that your grandfather was a real perv. They <laughs> <laughs> they, they probably did. They were probably like, this young boy renting Sega Genesis games and his grandpa's renting stuff about the Spice Girls. What a perv. Well, whenever I worked at a movie store, we had an adult room, and a lot of people come in with their kids and rent dirty movies, and I'm just like... Ooh, yeah, that would... I, I don't know. Pretty disturbing. One time I went in to, uh, <laughs> to another video store in our town. Um, this one's still open. It's called Captain Video in Portland, Tennessee. Um, and they have an adult room. And there was two Adam Woodards and like three or four Ricky Woodards yeah. in the town. Um, and one had like Ricky Woodard and Adam Woodard on the other account because like I actually know him. He's one of my friends. And um, his dad is named Ricky. His name is Dad Ricky too. I mean, his dad is named Ricky too. Oh my gosh. So we went to. Um, I didn't know. Hey, that. mister. Our son's still up, so. Um, we went to go rent some movies and they're like, oh, you have like a $50 late fee or a $45 late fee. And this was like in the mid nineties. So this was like an astronomical late fee at the time. And, um, don't knock the camera over, please. Sorry. We had to pause to get my son, uh, situated. So we go in to rent this video. And I forget what it was. You but said the late fees were astronomical. Yeah, it was like $50 in the mid-90s. And my dad's going to check out. And they're like, I'm sorry, you owe a bunch of late fees. And he's like, for what? And like, my dad is a huge cheapskate. Like, he <laughs> is just... He would not rent porn movies. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. He just... He's a cheapskate. Um, so, we um, go to check out. And they're like, yes... You owe uh, late fees for, and I remember one of the titles had like Cinderella in it, and one of them was about like <laughs> black cocks, and like I was, I was young enough to know that wait, that's not right. 
but I wasn't old enough to quite grasp what it was. I was like, Cinderella, black cops, what? And, uh, Wait, anyway, so it was a dirty movie? With it was a bunch of dirty movies. Was she, Cinderella one of them? Cinderella was in one of the titles. Oh, And oh, I remember okay. that because my dad was like, did you rent Cinderella? And she was like, sir, this isn't like Cinderella. It's like a dirty movie, Cinderella. And then she gave him all the lists, and he was like, I didn't rent those. Well, he just got mad, and we went out went out to the truck, and my grandmother was actually waiting for us. She had drove us up there, because my dad's completely irresponsible. So, <laughs> um, so uh, not that he couldn't drive, it's just that he, like, she he, was, he wasn't allowed to be around me without his parents present. Yes. Because the court ordered that. So she um, goes in and she's like, wait. And she figures out, oh, it's the other Ricky Woodard who also has a son named Adam Woodard. Because you could get put on the account, like, at any age. Um, it, this is, you know, the it was probably the 90s, but it could have been the 80s. Um, and you can get put on the account at any age and check out under your parents' name. So your parents didn't have to be there. They could just, like... Like, it's, Portland was a really small town, especially then, so people would walk to the video store, or their parents would drop them off and then go to the, the grocery store, or what have you. Um, anyway, I don't know why I told that story. <laughs> Completely random. Yeah. But. I'm sure that there was a reason in my train of thought that led me to that, but. Okay. So, basically. So, we are, reading, we are reviewing Tarot, The Black Witch, 101. In case you forgot through that six minute story. This is a standalone issue. Um, and then this is a holiday issue. It deals with December 5th, which is Crump and Snot. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that Crump right. Crump K R U M P, or K R A M P, Crump is not. N A U C H. Crump and Snot. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that right. I've seen it written, never heard it pronounced. And this is apparently a tradition that. Um, where bad children are dragged off and taken to the underworld and punished. It started in Germany. The NAUT should tell you that. Um, but there's the, the Yule Demons of Krumpenschnott who attack this chick. Um, I don't know what her name is. I don't know. She... See, it confused me because at one point she references another person named Taro. I thought this was Taro the Black Witch. I thought that that's who this was. But she says, Tarot trained me for. So, yeah. I don't know who this is. And she's referenced not by name in this. She's referenced as a witch multiple times by the Yule Demons. Mm -hmm. Look at that picture. This is the stuff you're dealing with in this book. Also, she has silver nipples, which is really weird. See? Well, her skin is kind of silvery. Silver nipples. So, um... Apparently, she has a vendetta against the Yule Demons, and she wants to um, take them all out to destroy them, because she thinks... Oh, this is not a spoiler for your review. It's not. No, I'm going to spoil everything. I don't really care. Whatever. <laughs> um, anyway, so she thinks that they're jerks, and she's going to take them out. And apparently, this has happened several times, because they referenced previous meetings, which I'm not aware of. But that doesn't affect the story. You can still read the story and not have read the previous readings. So I wrote down, and this I'll go over this list. I wrote down three things. What I liked, what I didn't like, and stuff that I thought was kind of weird. So... <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just reading the list. <laughs> so I also drew a picture of the, uh, the witch. Oh, that's beautiful. There you go. <laughs> Um, so, and there's a bunch of DMX lyrics on here too, which I'm not sure why I wrote those. I resort to violence, my niggas move with silence. You know what style is, New York niggas go back. That's my, uh, that's me rapping. Anyway, so what I liked, we'll start there. And Jenna, you want to tell something that you liked or? I really liked, uh, them including the horror elements, like, uh, Crump and Schnott. That to me was We've interesting. We've got to be saying that wrong, but I've never heard it pronounced. Like, <laughs> there's no way it's snot. Crump and snot. I don't know. It's just a very harsh word. It is. Um, but I liked the horror elements, and I liked Krumpus. So that was one thing that I did like was the horror elements of them kind of telling like an old 
horror story in a way of kids being dragged to the underworld that misbehaved and it makes Christmas pretty scary. <laughs> One of the things that I liked is there's no thought bubbles in this and of course most comics now don't have thought bubbles anyway. They have the little squares that are filled with whatever color represents the character for thoughts. They still have thought bubbles but not actual bubbles but the way they do it in this and i think holly go lightly was the letterist if you can see there it's kind of a negative um lettering where there's white on the outside and then black on the inside to tell the story and i really really liked that that's a technique that i've if i've seen it before i didn't remember it and i've not seen it enough for it to be commonplace but i really liked that and it's um like, sometimes when I'm reading the thought squares, the little blurbs in books, I'll be like, wait, are they saying this or are they thinking it? And I'll look for one of these little tells to see if they're thinking or saying it. With this, there's no question. Anything that's written like that, they're thinking. So I really liked that. Um, just something I liked. And is there anything else? Oh, Another thing that, this is something Jen, Jen and I have touched on already. I'm not sure if she liked it, but it's a standalone story, and it's easy to pick up. There's references to past stories, but you don't have to be privy to those past stories to know what's going on. I personally on. like standalones because you don't have to wait for the next issue. Like, you have it all right there. I, I think that's yeah. a good element. And uh, Jim Balance art is wonderful. Yes, the art is very good. I will agree with that. He's so talented, and he draws women just very nicely. Like, his <laughs> women are pretty. Um, yeah, but I thought that the, the art is very good. Like, especially when we're talking even about George, I feel like he really captured One thing, his... though, how are you going to fight in hills like that? I don't that know. is just... Talent. Yeah. Okay. But, but even, like... Like, take your shoes off. That gives you, like... Like, if you're on an even playing field when you're fighting... And you're like, oh, this guy is my equal. That bitch can just take her shoes off and be like 10 levels above you. So, but even in the art, like, I feel like he really captured George's likeness. Yeah, so and that, that was the next out. thing that I liked. And George is in it. So yes. it's pretty cool so to have a friend that is drawn into a comic book. Um, and George is also pictured in here. Like, there's a picture of him meeting Ballant yeah. at a convention. Um, Which is right here. But I think that that is awesome to have a friend yeah. that's in a comic. That's the only. I made it more enjoyable. I would have never bought like, this I comic yeah. if I wouldn't have known that George was in it. So I'm glad that I did. Right. And I feel like also how George was written, like in my mind, I, people, I think George would throw rocks that, at little girls. I, I think that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and like everything that George says is used with a exclamation point which and is that's how, how george I speaks him yeah in life like what he's saying um like that's how he writes like if we write you know sometimes we'll message each other that's how he writes to us or we get videos of him a lot and he's always yelling so yes george yells <laughs> so like i feel like they did a good job of capturing him as a like as a character in a book and also i had a next list of things i didn't like um, the first thing that I didn't like is the over-sexualization. Yeah, that's, that's it's just, not really for me. And um, the thing, like, it didn't drive me nuts until there's this one line. If you want to, if you want to talk, I'll look for this line and then... I, and I agree. I know the line that you're going for and I didn't like it either. I, I, it's just not for me. Like, I personally don't like those types of stories where it's all about, you know, sex, sex, sex. I do like... I think I would have liked it better if it was purely like a horror type story, which is kind of the direction that they were going with it. But then it got very sexualized. and Like, so the, the Yule Demon captures, um, I'm not sure if this is Tarot again or if it's just a witch, but he captures her in a basket, um, which is a magical basket. It, it, it's not as silly as it sounds. It makes sense yeah. in the story. Um, and he's whipping her butt. Like, he's got a whip, and he's leaving lash marks. And she says, ugh, my body wants more. My legs want to remain open. I want to be exposed. Fighting, fighting the seduction. And then, like, the picture is um, a pretty graphic picture of her vagina. 
And <laughs> like it's a book that I would be embarrassed to be seen like reading. <laughs> Not, like this dude is beating the snot out of her. And she's like thinking, oh my god, I want more. And it's just like... Kind of Fifty Shades of Grey. To me, that's... I, I don't know. That doesn't sound realistic. Maybe it is for some Well, it people, is for some people but, if you're into that stuff. But I... I, I don't know. I don't, that, just, that line, I thought that it was very poorly written. And it wasn't realistic. It kind of... Um, it, it took me out of the movie. It, it Or yeah. not took me out of the movie, but took me out of the book. It... It made my suspension of disbelief go away. I was like, oh, really? Come on. It made you roll your eyes pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> um, but with the over-sexualization, um, my next list is weird things, which... Well, were you not going to let me say one of my parks? Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. One thing that I did not like is something that Adam actually liked was the... Uh, I felt like it was too written too much about like what she thought whereas a lot of times it was kind of like over saying it because obviously this is a book with pictures sometimes you don't need to know like what they're say saying here on what they're thinking yeah what, what they're she's thinking trying to say. And, yeah like uh i don't know like one says fighting fighting and then the picture shows her fighting like do you really need yeah that? but she's not she doesn't mean physically fighting. She means she's fighting the urge to oh. let him continue spanking her. <laughs> what a weird thing to say in a comic book. <laughs> well, maybe... Well, here's like, fire serpents are my next wave. And then it shows her, like, shooting out serpents. Like, do you really have to say that? Like, you can look at the picture. And that's part of, you know, a comic book is enjoying the art and having the art tell a story too. So do you really need to say that? I liked it. I liked I, I liked her. Uh, sometimes I Okay. So weird things that I put in and number one, I wanna say that the chick in this comic is a cool looking chick as far as like when she's dressed and actually ready to fight. I like that she has the three black triangles in her face paints and I like that she has the almost crow like lips. I think that's cool. This picture totally disturbs me. But one thing that I marked as weird, like I said earlier, is the silver nipples. And um, she's wearing a leather strap in between her crotch. I, is that supposed to be... Yeah, I guess that is supposed to be a leather which, strap. I thought which that, is... I thought that that was the slit of her <laughs> vagina. Well, that's a very long... Oh my god. This has gotten so wrong. <laughs> this is just off track. Okay, so let me find the next thing. And this is weird. But I liked it, and I'll explain why I liked it. Um, oh, yeah, this is super weird. So, there's a spell cast on her that causes her to throw up worms. So, there she is throwing up worms. Then, on the next page, she's, like, pooping worms, and worms are coming out of her vagina. They're coming out of everywhere. And, um, so it's pretty graphic when she's going about the worms. But, I, you know, it's gross. It is. Mm -hmm. But here's why I liked it. All the hypersexualization and building her up as a sex symbol is just thrown down at that point. It's like, oh my god, that's so gross. Yeah, that's not very sexy. And <laughs> like they do this in the Harley Quinn books where they try to make her a sex symbol and then they'll make poop jokes, but the jokes are just funny. So she's still like, oh, sex symbol. But that's pretty graphic. <laughs> So, I like that. I like the fact that they show her not only as, like, you know, like, this is nerd jerk-off material, essentially. So, not only that, but then they humanize her by making her shit worms everywhere. Weird thing to say. But, I, yeah, I would, think it brought her down. At from, that point, you would lose all your credibility of being beautiful. You'd be like, well, she's really cute, but remember that time she shit worms? Like, that was really yeah. gross. Yeah. So, those were my... Um, that was my opinion. I don't know that I'll buy any more Tarot's. Uh, it's just not my thing. Uh, because of one other thing. And this is my other bad point that I, I skipped over. Uh, and it has nothing to do with the book. This reminded me of a girl I dated for like four months, like ten years ago. Who was just crazy. Like she was... Like when we started dating she was like you know i had a crush on you in high school and i put a spell on you to make sure that you would fall in love with me sometime and i was like say what now 
And um, Adam's mom said that like she had like all these witchcraft books and stuff in your house. I don't remember that, but I'm not saying it's not true. She was really into like witchcraft and stuff. And, um, like, She's, she had a big onk tattooed on her back and stuff like that. She lied a lot, too, though. And she, yeah, she lied a lot. But anyway, I can picture her Please. sitting down and reading this entire series and thinking, oh, my God, this is the greatest thing I've ever read. And that has nothing to do with Jim Ballant or Highly Go Lightly or anything there. But there's certain things where when you associate them with another person, you're not interested in them anymore. Yeah, that's true. And that is something like witchcraft things to that extent is something that I associate with her and being crazy as hell. And because of that, I probably won't ever read another one of these, uh, unless like George is in another one or something. But that, I mean, it, it disassociated me with the book. I couldn't get into it as much as I normally would have. And again, that's through no fault of the creative team or anything to that extent. That's just because I knew somebody who left a, a bad impression, and that's one of the things that I associate with them. Well, and I can say, what are you doing, son? <laughs> he has brought his, entoy, and his entire toy rack out here. Take that back to your room, Bubba. Go put it back, please. Put it back. The only reason why I will not read it again... I mean, I, I maybe would pick up an issue if, like you said, George was in it again. But I would like to see them write something that is purely, like, horror-based. Not with the sexualization. That's what takes me out of the story. It's not something that I'm comfortable reading or that I enjoy reading. So... That's my, but I think that's kind of their thing. Or yeah, whatever. I think that's their niche. Is they yeah, um, yeah, they get yeah, people in, yeah, they draw them in yeah, by the yeah, sexualization. Yeah. Will you take that back in your room, please? Yeah, take it back. It doesn't go in here. All right. Well, that completes our review for uh, Terror Witch of the Terror Terror Black Witch of the Black Rose One Hundred One. We want to thank you guys for watching and hope you guys have a hope great day. Hope you enjoyed it. Go pick up the book. George is in it. Yeah, pick up the book.